What is up, guys? It's your boy, Elusive Illusions, back here with another week of predictions. This time, I still have my green screen, but I'm not using it because I feel like it looks better without it because, like, it's a little bit staticky because my green screen sucks. Um, so I'm just going to have it like that from now on. But last week, I went 7-7, seven and seven, as you guys can see up there in comparison to last video. A bunch of upsets from really good teams to really bad teams, a.k.a. Packers game, Titans game. There was another game, too, the Rams game. There was so many upsets that not many people were calling that I wasn't calling either, but did happen. So, rough week. Started off 1-6. and six, Ended off 7-7, seven and seven, though. Not the worst week that could have gone there, obviously. Um, hoping to bounce back this week, you know, at least go positive. Hopefully go, you know, 14-0. and 0. That's always a goal every week. But, you know, without further ado, let's get right into these predictions. First game here, we have the most unpredictable game of the year has to be, right? Uh, Packers travel to Santa Clara uh, maybe tomorrow. I mean, I think I heard that the Packers plane has left for Santa Clara. Um, 49ers, their uh, facility shut down today. Kevin Bourne, their wide receiver, got COVID. Um, Monday, A.J. Dillon got COVID. The Packers probably without... Aaron Jones, their halfback. Jamal Williams, their second-string halfback. A.J. Dillon, their third-string halfback. Packers are on to their wide receivers at halfback with Swerve and Irvin, who's our kick return slash wide receiver, but can also be used as a halfback. Um, Niners on, like, their 10th-string halfback as well. This is literally going to be, like, 5th-string against 8th-string here. Um, also... If this game is played Thursday, which technically it's supposed to still happen since the Packers have left for Santa Clara on plane. Um, no team coming from the East or Central time zone has ever won a Thursday night game on the West Coast ever. <laughs> I mean, Thursday night football only started in 2006, but still in the 14 years that Thursday night football has been a thing, no East Coast team has won a West Coast game. And I think vice versa, too. I'm not 100% sure on that statistic. Actually, no. That wouldn't work because it's three hours forward, not behind. Well, whatever. But it, it's it's so hard to call. Being a Packers fan, I'm going to have to choose the Packers in a coin flip game. But this could honestly go any way here, honestly, because it's like you've never seen any of these guys. The Packers' lead halfback, I think, for actually running the ball is going to be Dexter Williams who only has five carries in his whole career, and he's been in the league for two, three years, I think, now, and he's only had five carries in his whole career. Um, so who knows how he'll do, bro. Um, same with the Niners. You know, they have who, Ayuk, and then Kevin Bourne, their wide receiver, got COVID, so it's like you really don't know uh, what anybody's going to look like, you know. Um, we'll just have to wait till tomorrow, so, you know. But for this game, give me the Packers. Next game here, we have the Texans at the Jaguars. Um, Jaguars, I'm pretty sure, are with our Gardner Minshew. He wasn't supposed to play last week with something in his thumb, but the Jags did have their bye week. So, you know, obviously didn't play because it was a bye week, but if he didn't, he was expected to not play, which I'm not sure what his status is for this week. But with or without him, I feel like the Texans are the better one-win team. They both have one wins. I'm 100 Pretty pretty sure on that one, but um, anyways, Texans I feel like are are a slightly better team. They both suck and their seasons are over. But since I have to pick, I'm gonna have to pick the Texans on this one. Next game up here, we have uh, another tale of two. Not I mean I, I I can't say it's the NFC East. You know both these teams could make the playoffs, but you know they're not gonna make it far if they happen and do make the playoffs over the Eagles, which are favored right now by quite a bit, I'm pretty sure. But we have the Giants at the Washington football team. Giants won their matchup about two weeks ago. Giants were home, though, and it was a very close game. Uh, so for that reason, I feel like Washington will win this game. Also, I didn't fix the logo. I, I still have the Redskins logo from last season. But if the Lions, or if the Lions, oh my God, if the Washington football team doesn't suck, and I actually decide to pick them like more than one week because I didn't even decide. I didn't think I was going to even pick the Washington football team this whole season. So that's why I didn't even fix the logo. But it turns out they're not absolutely trash and they could win against trash teams, a.k.a. their own division sometimes. So 
once they actually get good, I'll fix their logo. Or when I have time or feel like it, whatever. Um, but for right now, give me the Washington football team to win this game. Next game here, we have the Baltimore Ravens at the Indianapolis Colts. Probably one of the best 1 o'clock games here to offer. One of them, should I say. Um, maybe not the best, but one of them for sure. Um, Ravens have not been looking as good in the regular season as of last year. Last year, they only lost two regular season games. They already have two regular season losses throughout, halfway throughout the season. Um, that was worded weird, but you know what I'm saying. Colts have been doing a lot better, but they have been playing way worse teams than the Ravens, you know, just beating up on the Lions. Ravens almost beat the undefeated, still undefeated, only undefeated team, the Steelers. So I feel like the Ravens have been playing better competition, and I feel like they're going to win this week. So for this game, give me L. Ravens. Next game here, I just had to switch my decision because uh, as I'm making this at 4.10 p.m. Uh, Wednesday, November 4th, at 4.07 p.m., three minutes ago, Matthew Stafford just got put on the COVID-19 list. I was going to pick the Lions in this game. I had some faith in the Lions here. Um, but now the Lions starting, I presume, Chase Daniels. Um, this is a Sunday game, though, so they do have a few days to prepare. I mean, obviously, before this, they weren't really preparing. So they have a few days to prepare Chase Daniels for this matchup. Against the Vikings, um, Delvin Cook's been looking really good for the Vikings, too. I mean, he did face the Packers' terrible run defense. But you want to know who else has a terrible run defense? The Lions. So good division for Delvin Cook to be in. If he wants to be good, uh, because everyone here's run defense sucks, besides the Bears. But, you know, whatever. They get free wins against the Lions and Packers, apparently. So, for this game, you know, Stafford out. Um, Dalvin Cook looking really good. Um, I'm, I'm barely going to have to pick the Vikings here, dude. If uh, Stafford was in, I would have picked the Lions, but not probably going to be in this week or the week after. So, give me Vikings. Next game here, we have the Bears at the Titans. Titans, they they can't lose three in a row, right? You you can't. You physically can't lose three games in a row. You're five and zero. Oh, you lose a game. Okay, bounce back against the Bengals. No, they lose against the Bengals. So now you can't lose against the Bears. You're gonna get bullied. You're gonna get made fun of. You can't lose three games in a row. You can't start off five and zero oh, and then lose an extra. Is what I'm saying. Especially against teams of this caliber, you lose to the Bengals, dude. Who did they lose before that? I don't even know. They lost, so I know that. They got their first loss. I, oh, it was against the Steelers. So they had an admirable opponent in the Steelers. But then they lose to the Bengals. They get blown out by the Bengals. And then they face the Bears, which is a, a bad team, you know. Uh, record, I feel like, is a little bit better. But, dude, the Titans, they, they can't lose three in a row, oh, man. They're, or blah, 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 three in a row. So they're going to do everything they can to not lose three in a row. Bears, um fall to three losses on the season they lose two in a row now because they lost to the saints last week especially being on the road two against the titans who also have fans in attendance i'm pretty positive so for that reason also give me l titans next up here we probably have my easiest game to pick so far the panthers traveled to arrowhead stadium to play the chiefs um chiefs are the better team they're at home. What else do you really want me to say, man? You know, there's, yeah, I don't know. They got a chance, though. The Panthers are better than we expected. Does that mean they're better than the Chiefs? No. Does that mean they're probably going to win? No. But it does mean they have a slightly higher chance of winning. That's all I'm going to say. So, is it possible? Yes, it's possible they win. But will they? Probably not. So, you know, give me the Chiefs. Next game here, we have the Seahawks at the Bills. Um, very interesting game, I will say this. Sea Chickens, Seahawks, um, they've been looking good. Not as good as the first month of the of the season. You know, their defense is still horrendous. Um, might be a game that Josh Allen gets back on track as he's been slacking, you know, falling out of the MVP race in the past few weeks. So, might be looking to pick up ground. Doubt will win MVP anymore. Um, but, you know, at least perform like a really good quarterback. You know, prove that he's he's improving throughout the years. Um, you know, like people were saying he was at the start of the season. 
Um, Seahawks still, though, I feel like are the less shaky team, and they'll get a win. You know, Seahawks are still getting wins. You know, they only have one loss on the season. Bills have a couple. And they almost lost last week to the Patriots, which aren't really that good of a team if Cam Newton didn't fumble the bag. So I feel like in this game, the Sea Chickens will be able to win. So give me the Sea Chickens. Next game here, we have the Broncos at the Falcons. Broncos just... <laughs> I just thought of this right before I started up this recording. Broncos just came back from a 21-point deficit against the Chargers in one last week. And then they play the Falcons... Who guess what the Falcons are known for? Blowing leads. Facing a team who just made a 21-point comeback against the Chargers. But the Chargers are known for blowing leads too, just not as infamously. But I have a gut feeling in the Falcons. The Falcons are at home. I feel like they're more healthy, you know. I feel like they got Julio right back in full capacity. Their offense should um, be as good as they usually are, you know, at least in the passing attack. Todd Gurley, too, they have. So their offense should be of no concerns. Their Broncos defense has still been really decent, even with injuries. You know, obviously Von Miller and stuff like that. Um, but I feel like the Falcons will be able to just score more points than the Broncos this game. So give me L. Falcons in this game. Next game here, we have the 405 game with the Raiders and the Chargers. Chargers blown four 16-plus point leads in their last four games. Not many people have recognized this, but good news for the Chargers. They're not going to be blown a 16-point lead today because they play the Raiders. And I don't even expect them to get a 16-point lead because I expect the Raiders to be leading most of the game. I expect the Raiders to win this game. They're just the way better team. Um, you know, way more consistent, way more, more better, more betterer, if that's a word. And that's not obviously a word, but, <laughs> you know, Raiders are just a better team, man. Um, you know, and they're not even going to let the Chargers get a lead. And if they do, then the Chargers will probably blow it again. So, win-win, I guess. Um, so, give me the Raiders in this game. There we go. Next game here, we have the Dolphins at the Arizona Cardinals. Um, Dolphins have to travel all the way to Arizona, so quite a far trip for the Dolphins to be making. Dolphins, though, looking very impressive. Got their first one with Tua, blowing out the Rams. More defensive play than offensive. You know, Tua didn't look as good as the score showed. You know, they won by, like, what, 11 points? But, you know, what, 21 of those were scoring on... Well, they scored 28, and, what, 21 of them were basically scored by the defense most, like, pretty much. Um, but the Cardinals have looked more impressive than the Dolphins have, you know. Um, I feel like this will be a close game, though. Probably an actual more entertaining than the next game we're going to be covering for sure. But should be a close game. Dolphins could definitely have a chance to win this one. But I'll be picking the more likely chance, which is the Cardinals win. And with our easiest pick of the week, uh, in my opinion, um, <laughs> Steelers have to travel to Jerry World to play the the cow the cowgirls. Um, you know, arguably one of the worst teams in football right now, most injured team in football right now. Um, excuse me. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I have to say for this. You know, um, Steelers are gonna beat down on the Cowboys. It's not even going to be close, you know, maybe because, you know, the Steelers aren't that uh, high-powered of an offense, but, you know, their defense is going to literally murder the Cowboys. I'll be surprised if the Cowboys put up double-digit points, honestly. I'll be very shocked. Um, this this one isn't even a game, you know. Free pick of the week, basically. Um, you know, if I was picking against a spread or something, you know, I think it's like, what, minus 14 in favor of the Steelers. I would even pick that, honestly. That's a pretty safe bet, unless that's moved. Like I said, uh, I don't bet, so <laughs> I don't, you know, check the lines religiously, but I heard that's what it was at at the start of the week. Might be a good thing to bet on if it's still at that, <laughs> at that if you can. Um, but yeah, give me the Steelers in this game. Next game here, we have a very interesting game to pick here. We have the Saints at the Buccaneers. Saints have regressed since week one. Bucks have mightily improved since week one. Um... All signs are pointing towards Tampa Bay, really, in this match, you know. Um, Bucks, they're getting more chemistry on their team. Uh, Saints have had injury problems, you know. Michael Thomas, Emmanuel Sanders, their top receivers. Drew Brees has been confirmed to be, like, the most washed-up quarterback in the league right now. 
Very difficult uh, to pick the Saints in this game. Bucks are at home now, too. So many advantages pointing towards the Bucks in this game. The only advantage that doesn't is what 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 happened Monday? What happened Monday? The Bucks were one play away from going into overtime. And on what could have even been, it was called a pa pass interference. And then they picked up the flag for some reason. You know, I feel like, you know, in my opinion, the, the flag should have stayed on the field because, you know, they're just like in the Packers game, you know, it's clear, you know, it wasn't clear and obvious that it wasn't pass interference. So it's like, why would you pick the flag up then? You know, same thing happened in both games. I felt like both of them should have stayed, you know, since they did throw the flag initially. They couldn't really overturn it, but they did somehow. Um, so the Bucks probably almost went to overtime against a 1-7 now Giants team. So uh, that's the only thing that's not trending for them. Now everything else is very much trending for the Bucks. So, you know, I got to listen to all those trends and pick the Bucks in this game. Next up, we have round two of why is this a Monday night game? Another... Monday night game going to be played in New York, or actually not even in New York, but you know, between two New York teams, but they're going to both be played in New Jersey. Uh, we have the the Patriots at the Jets. Very, uh, very interesting there. Um, both teams really suck, but you know what? Uh, Patriots are going to stop their losing streak here against what the 0-8 Jets they are now, 0-8, 0-7. I don't care about the record. I know they have no wins, though. Against the Patriots, who have two wins. Uh, Patriots uh, should be able to get a win here. If not, that's embarrassing. The Jets do have a chance, though. If there's any game that they're probably going to win for the rest of the season, it's right here because they play what? They play the Ravens in, later in the season, all that good stuff. So I feel like they're not going to have any chance like late on the, later on in the season unless teams like rest for the playoffs or something like that. But this is probably the Jets' best chance. They're at home Monday night. You know, anything could really happen on a primetime game. But I feel like the thing that's going to happen is the Patriots win. I appreciate you guys tuning in, though. Let me know your predictions in the comments. Okay, I forgot to even put the Patriots. There we go. There's my predictions. Hopefully they go well this week. Let me know your predictions in the comment section below. Drop a sub and like if you guys have it already or if you do. And I'll see you guys in the next week of predictions. Week 10. See you all then.